Uh, okay, now go. Sorry. Live. <laughs> You're live. <laughs> Once again, we are technical giants here at the Sternberg Museum, uh, figuring out how to do our daily live feeds. So today is Thursday, I think. Yep. I don't know what day it is anymore. Um, so we are into, uh, I don't know, day 615 of our social distancing efforts. Um, Very distant. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> Introduce yourselves. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alicia. Hi, Ian. <laughs> and we are here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, bringing the dome to your home. Uh, today we're going to talk about some live critters. Um, we're going to talk about our snakes. We're going to talk about our non-venomous snakes. Um, and this is our in-house naturalist, Alicia. And she hangs out with these critters. She knows them far better than I do. And they all have their own distinct personalities. And this is Pretzel, right? Yes, this is Pretzel. Good and, job. and Pretzel is a great... Plains rat snake. Woohoo! I can be taught. <laughs> so tell us about uh, what we're doing here. All right. So today I was going to introduce you to some of the very many snakes we have here, and I was going to feed some of them for you. So before we do any of that, just fair warning, we do feed our snakes mice. They are dead and were frozen and now are defrosted, so we don't do live feedings for our non-venomous snakes. So if you're squeamish, that might be a little bit too much for you, but if not, then it's really cool to watch them. I have Pretzel out here because she is, oh, she is our mascot. She is very well known around here. She's very well known on Facebook, parties, all that stuff. And she is the first snake that I ever held. When I started here three years ago, I was terrified of snakes until I met Pretzel. So as you have a close up on Pretzel here, I think you can probably see that her eyes are blue. So this is why we are not feeding pretzel today, because she is about to shed. So you can see that they're blue and her skin is kind of getting loose. That's why you can kind of see it right there. And she's looking pretty dull. So she is ready to shed, but she is just a big old baby and she loves people. So she's not too upset about being handled while she is shedding. So you see that her eyes are blue. Let me explain that really quick. So snakes do not have eyelids. They cannot blink. So her eyes are blue because she has skin over her eyes that she will shed with the rest of her body. So I have snake skin here. This is from our bull snake, Jacob. It's not even a full shed, so that gives you any idea how big he is. So maybe if Rachel can zoom in on this shed right here, you will see that there are eyes. So there's skin over the eyes that they shed off, and to me it kind of looks like they have contacts. So, Pretzel was just oh so lovely shedding for me today so that I could show that to you guys. So, snakes typically shed when they are growing. Um, Pretzel here is 20 years old. She was actually born here in this museum to two of our other snakes, both named Buddy. Whoever came up with that idea was just... So, her parents are named Buddy and Buddy. Buddy and Buddy. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yes. confusing. <laughs> it is confusing. It is. I, I only, I, I guess I... Only Which the, buddy was the one that I thought I knew? The female buddy, the mom buddy. Okay, all right. So, yes, mom buddy lived to be about 27 years old here at the museum, so she recently passed away. Mom buddy was the first snake that I ever held. Yes, mom buddy was wonderful. She pooped all over kids. It was great. On command. <laughs> On it, was, command. it was amazing. Pretzel's learning to do that. She's a work in progress. but I think they like the reaction. You know, I think they do too, and I really like when kids clean it up for me. <laughs> That's always nice. So snakes typically shed in one whole piece. Um, they will typically shed when they are trying to grow. Um, Pretzel being 20 years old, she is constantly growing like the rest of the snakes, but she is growing slower now. So she typically sheds mm, maybe twice a year. So, and she doesn't eat as much as smaller snakes do. She usually only eats about once every two weeks during the summer and maybe once a month during the winter. So other reasons a snake could shed is if they're sick and they're trying to get rid of some sort of bacteria or parasite or something like that, but she's nice and healthy for a 20 year old snake that is. And snakes can sometimes shed in pieces. When the snakes are shedding in pieces, that's kind of showing that they're not having a very healthy shed, either they're not humid enough and it's too dry, or maybe they are sick. So those are some things that we watch out for for healthy snakes. And of course, pretzel is a very healthy snake. So she's probably just going to hang out here and slither around for a little bit. 
which is fine by me. She doesn't go far. So for those of you who are watching, I guess I have a question. Is anybody here afraid of snakes? And if you are afraid of snakes, why are you afraid of snakes? Because when I started, I was very afraid of snakes too. And then I got bit by my first snake and then I realized it doesn't hurt and I can do this. So I started off as a volunteer, not as an employee. So they were stuck with me. So here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. It's very, very, very tiny. But this is a snake tooth from a non-venomous snake. So if you've ever been bit by a snake or not, it does not hurt. You will bleed a little bit, depending on how big the snake is. But mainly, to me, it's the shock of being struck at by a snake. Most of my snakes here only bite if they happen to miss their food. Are you, what was she doing there, Pretzel? <laughs> if they miss their food and they get your fingers instead. Sophie says she's just a little afraid because she worries they might bite her. Yes. So if you're meeting a snake out in the wild, oh, you're going to fall off. Their instincts are not going to be to bite you. They are going to want to get away from you. Sometimes they'll coil up and strike, but that's just because they really, where are you going? They don't see another way out, probably because you are too close. And lots of people like to see a snake and either chase after it or try to get close to it. Growing up, people like to. Are you frozen on your end? Nope. It's just you. It's just me. All it's right, just never you. mind. <laughs> Anyways. When I grew up, people like to poke snakes with sticks, so of course they're going to get angry and they're going to strike at you, but they are just terrified of you. They want to get away. Let's be honest, we're pretty scary people. So here we have some fangs from one of our rattlesnakes downstairs. Hello. I'm not sure which rattlesnake it's from, but those are a lot bigger. So yeah, those are obviously going to hurt, plus the venom is going to hurt, but being bit by a non-venomous snake, to me, it's nothing. It's a little bit more painful if you have a bigger snake, but Pretzel's never bitten anybody, so I can't I, tell you. I, I, I was bit once during uh, an education program. I can't remember who it was. It was it was one of the snakes I know really well. And the only reason I got struck at was because I'd been handling mice. Oh. And I'd forgotten to wash my hands before I was showing the snake. So in the snake's defense, my fingers look like pinkies, mm -hmm. like little pinky mice. <laughs> yep. And not only did they look like pinky mice, they smelled like pinky mice. Mm -hmm. So the snake thought I was trying to feed it. And Kind of went, like got it. really excited, and it was much more, yeah, the, the fact that, you know, a snake that's normally really still got excited and struck at me that surprised me yes. rather than actually getting bit. So well, the know. one snake I've been bit by that was angry was a wild water snake, and if you know water snakes, they're known for being kind of yeah, they're kind of cranky. Yeah, don't go. How long do snakes typically live in captivity when they're well taken care of, like pretzel? Well, pretzel's already twenty. She's not showing any signs of slowing down. Since I've been here, we've really only had three snakes pass away, and they were both from an old age. Two of them lived to be 27, one lived to be 22. Uh, hello, are you gonna strike at me? You know, like this is why I brought this guy. But typically, 25 years if they're well taken care of. Um, those guys were obviously very spoiled, they were our babies. Hello. Sometimes, you know, there can be, you get a snake from the wild and they already have a parasite, or sometimes we get snakes that were previously injured and brought to us. Sorry. So they don't live as long, but you know, we always try. Typically, we know a snake's getting up in age because they tend to get tumors a lot. So that's always one weird thing. We usually take them to the vet to see if there's anything we can do about it, but if not, then we do put them down. <laughs> What? Look at him you vibrating. Him do you see him vibrating oh, his, tail? his tail? So this is <laughs> rude. This is why I brought him. So this is a California king snake. Hello. Believe it or not, he goes to children's birthday parties and he's a lovely little creature. And he ate yesterday. So this is Oreo. He is a California king snake. So if you guys know anything about king snakes, they tend to eat other snakes. That's obviously not their main diet, but they are good at it. And California king snakes are known for being very strong. So obviously this guy is not full grown. What are you doing? If I put my hand towards you, you're gonna bite it, aren't you? He's like, look, I'm scary. Yeah. Look, I'm scary. So his name's Oreo. We got him because he was actually somebody's pet and he wouldn't eat in captivity, even though he was bought from a pet store. Got him here, gave him a mouse, and then he swallowed it in like two seconds. So I just like to pretend he really likes us. So I tend to say he likes, he, does. he likes to play rattlesnake. So you guys saw him vibrating his tail and you see him standing up like he's gonna, well, he is gonna strike, aren't you? You gonna strike? No? You gonna vibrate your tail though? 
Good job. <laughs> so Oreo does go to birthday parties and he is really great with kids. I think he's just a little cranky from the self-isolation thing and now, social distancing. He has been very quiet yes. and very lonely. And he hasn't been getting played with in this anything. museum. It's it's working on all of us. Yes. Especially the tortoises downstairs. It's so weird to see him because I've even handled him and he's well, just like you know, it's, super it's chill. When we were downstairs in the lobby yesterday. All of the lobby animals were doing things we don't normally see them do daily, you know, on a day to day basis when we're normal, you know, and having visitors and everything. Mm -hmm. So we had Thea, the, the snake was moving around on the tree. We had Levi was just actively swimming around like a really. Like he was a oh young man, he was probably turtle. trying to poop everywhere. Yeah, maybe that's what he was doing. He didn't look like he had a poop face though. He just looked like he was like having fun swimming. Yeah, you know the turtles are not enjoying this. Some of the snakes are. So his typical thing is to poop on me. Oh, he Sophia, we miss you me. too. <laughs> what? Sophia. Sophia's, she oh. agrees. She misses the museum. Yes. I'm still here, but I still miss it because I'm not here as long as I do. I just, you know, it's very, very, very quiet it here. Is. So occasionally I'll be in my office working, and I'll just sort of look up and realize how quiet. It Have you noticed crazy, you any know? of the hauntings that happen here? Oh, we're I not going to go there. Yes, this place is haunted, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to introduce you to some of our snakes on display. Ian's got her lovely pretzel there. I've got pretzel. You're good? I'm okay, good. awesome. All right, so I'm going to try to feed some of these snakes for you, but first I want you to introduce some of them. So the first one I'm going to introduce to you is... Do I need to get out of your way? No, you're fine. Okay, good. Is actually... A venomous snake. So we only have one venomous snake up here, and it is a copperhead. And as you can see, she is hungry as well. But again, we have to have two people here, and she does eat live mice. So we will feed her later. We won't feed her here, but she is beautiful and she is hungry. And if you look down at this beautiful baby, this is Rachel's favorite snake. Hi. This is Pretzel's roommate. So this is a coach whip named Whippersnapper. Rachel obviously named it. Good job, Rachel. <laughs> Whippersnapper is very old. Whippersnapper is starting to go blind. So when you have to feed Whippersnapper, you have to be very, here's the mouse. It's right in front of your face. And then she bites it very gently. So if she was out in the wild right now, she would not be surviving because mm -hmm. she cannot see. And also she's just a big old baby. So Pretzel and her live together. They are nice and friendly. So, so Teresa fun. is asking, why do, you, why do you think a snake without a rattle would be rattling its tail? So snakes without rattles are rattling their tails because they are mimicking rattlesnakes. So obviously if you're a predator out in the wild and you hear a rattle, you're probably not going to try to go near that thing. At least I would really hope as a person you're not going to. Unless of course you're probably Curtis or something. He might go towards the snake. <laughs> but if you hear the rattle, you're probably going to be like, okay, that's a venomous snake. I'm going to go the other direction and get out of here. So non-venomous snakes are doing it for the same purpose. They are pretending they are rattlesnakes. They are trying to tell you to go away. And lots of non-venomous snakes do that. Um, our bull snakes do that, our rat snakes do that. Um, and obviously our king snakes do that as well. So there are some other snakes that probably would do it, but not here. So what's fun about coach whips, and we actually have two of them, is that when you think of most of these snakes, you're thinking of them as constrictors. So they are constricting their prey to kill it. They even do that here in captivity, typically even though their mice are already dead. Whereas, coach whips do not do that. And so maybe if we're lucky, I can go feed one of our coach whips and he will show us how he kills his prey. So I'll introduce you to this one who is just already looking at us. Yeah. So this is another coach whip. So if you notice, she looks a lot different than that white one we just saw. So typically if you see a coach whip, they either are that white sandy color or they are black. This one is both. This one is actually a captive snake. He's never been out in the wild. He was donated to us, he, she, whatever it is. And when we got it, it had a very ridiculous feeding response. As you can probably see, you open that door and it would come shooting out, which kind of made my employees afraid of it, but it has actually never bitten me. So I'm gonna go in the back room really quick and I'm gonna see if it'll take a mouse for us. I don't fall. Don't fall. <laughs> Do 
She looks like she's ready. Or he. Oh. She's probably being a little shy for the camera. Well, you know, there are nearly 30 people watching, and it's hard to eat when there's so many people watching. <laughs> oh, no. So, apparently she's camera shy. That's what we were wondering. She might yeah, be a little camera shy. Her? No, I can't blame her. So, typically, I do not leave mice in the cage like that, because that's just a recipe for coming back the next day and the mouse is not eaten and then my room smells really bad. But I guarantee as soon as you guys are gone, she is going to eat it because she is very hungry. But then I hope we can get some snake to eat for us. So usually they have um, a typical schedule. So usually every Thursday or Wednesday of every other week, they are getting fed. So the ones that don't do that are like our dirty, dirty water snakes back here. <laughs> So typically their cages get cleaned when they get fed. Sometimes you have to clean them every day in terms of ones that are in their water bowl all the time. Or my garter snake that just loves his water. I cleaned it yesterday so that it would look good for today. And if we go check out his cage, I promise you it does not look good. <laughs> Got a question. Yes. So what signs do they show to let you know that they're hungry or do they just eat once a day? Well, so when they are here in captivity, they know where the food is coming from. So we have doors that open in the back. They will either be staring at me because they know who I am. They know that I bring food. Or they will be staring at the wall. Or they will be standing straight up. Earlier, my glossy snake was just standing straight up. I know she won't eat for camera for us, though, because she is very, very shy. Um, but she was just climbing up the wall and staring at the back. Also, if I open their cages to clean them and they come looking at me, I know that they're hungry. Half of them will come shooting out if there are crazy snakes, which we have three crazy snakes and she is one of them. They don't have names, we just call them crazy snakes. The other one is our eraser, who is right above me, and then our garter snake. So if anybody's ever played with a garter snake, they've earned their name crazy snake. So let's see, our racer. He looks like he's shedding as well, so unfortunately, we're not gonna get to feed him because if he's shedding, he's not going to eat. But if you see his little tail right there, he has a little nubbin tail. He actually got ran over, obviously just a little bit, but then they brought him to us when he was really, really tiny. He's grown in the last three years, but he loves to eat. He would eat every day if we let him. We don't let him because that would be a lot of mice, and if he doesn't poop, he doesn't get more food because we don't want him to get backed up or anything like that. So I'm gonna see if we have any hungry snakes. Usually our garter snake eat. Let me kick Ian here. Okay. What about our hog nose? Our hog nose, she looks hungry, right? She's looking at us, she is beautiful. She will not eat for the camera. Oh. She does not eat hand feed. You have to leave the mouse in there for her. She's very shy. Um, so this is a plains hog nose or a western hog nose, and then we have an eastern hog nose. So hog noses are really cool. Obviously, they have the little pig nose. They specialize in eating toads, and so we obviously don't feed them toads very often here because we would have to have toads to feed them. So they eat mice. They're still good at it. They would still eat mice out in the wild, but it does make it a little bit more difficult. And for some reason, I've noticed when people visit the museum, the hog noses are the snakes that get picked on. They are the ones that kids tap on the glass. I think it's because they hiss. So if you make them angry and you tap on the glass, they're not hearing it because they don't have ears, but they are feeling the vibrations and they get angry at kids. So I'll just be walking around doing my normal stuff and then I will just hear snakes hissing. And I always know it's one of my hog noses. But Western hog noses are also common pets. And so are other types of hog noses. Oh, there's your Eastern. I was like, where is she at? Oh, there she is. Well, she is flattening herself. Um, it's kind of a good she's... example of how each one of these animals sort of has their own personality, oh, their sure. own way of 
doing things. Telling you. So, yeah. Look know. at her. She is being like a pancake. Yes. She's like She also cobras. So she will stand up, she will flatten out her neck, and she will hiss at you. So she does look like a cobra when she does that. That also might be why people tap on the glass, but we don't like that. But you see, you have these two snakes that are just, they'll hiss all the time. Then you have the long nose over here. So do you no, only feed snake. the mice or? The hog noses sometimes get toads if I have toads available. Usually that'll be when people bring me a bunch of dead baby toads during that time where there's dead baby toads everywhere. Mm. And then they'll get toads then and they're really good about eating those. But typically mice are what we have available. Um, the garter snake gets anything and everything. He gets chunks of meat. He gets fish. He will eat anything. Wasn't, didn't we have a gardener snake at one point that liked to eat cheese? <laughs> Probably. I remember Thea no, telling me about Thea, she probably fed it cheese. <laughs> I used to have a lizard that I fed popcorn chicken to once, so that was Why, really why do hog noses have the hog nose? Does it give them any sort of advantage in the wild? They do dig with it. So our guys don't dig very much because they don't have very much substrate. But when, um, you can kind of see where she has lines going, she is digging with it. So I've seen her dig, I've never seen him dig. He likes to climb up his plants. So eastern hog noses, to me, they're kind of weird. They are very cranky, every one that I've had. But the western hog noses are pretty sweet. Um, hi, Crush. Yes, yeah, so this is our garter snake. So he's the one that eats anything and everything. So he's our other crazy snake. And, oh, oh, hello. Goodness. Hello. So he is very hard to feed because of his crazy attitude. But you can see he's looking towards the wall now. So we can try to feed him. I'm not going to guarantee it. I can already smell his cage from here. I just cleaned it yesterday, but you can see his water bowl is already almost empty and it is full of sand. So he does not like a clean house. He likes a dirty house. So I can go ahead and try to feed him. Chances are, if he doesn't take it, at least you're going to see him go crazy in his cage. Or you might see him shoot out the back. So let's see what happens. He's kind of like a college dude, yes. like a frat boy. <laughs> Going crazy. He's going crazy. Nom, 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 nom. Didn't he grab it by the head? He grabbed it several times and just was like, I'm so excited for just food. Throwing it around. <laughs> so, doing a happy you've dance. Watched any of our videos when we fed Thea or when we fed the rattlesnakes, you probably learned that they typically have to eat the mouse by the head first so that it goes down smoothly. He is seeming to disagree with that. He is going to try to eat a tail first. Oh, hello. So most of our snakes here are constrictors and garter snakes can constrict their prey, but this guy pretends that he likes to drown them or he likes to fling them against rocks. Sometimes they will just hold them to the ground and suffocate them, so it's different than constricting, but they will also just eat their prey live. They don't really care, they just want food. Love the big smile on Alicia's face. Yeah, God. she's twisted that way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, I love my snakes, what can I say? And it's always fun to feed them. And I've been on maternity leave for eight weeks, so I've missed them extremely. Yeah, you gotta do what you're about, right? Yes. Uh, there's a question, You can you see it on my face? Snakes don't really have fused skulls, do they? So they don't, um, as you can see when he's eating right now, you can see the back of his jaw right there. So lots of people, when they think of snakes, they think of the unhinged jaw that allows them to eat prey bigger than their mouths, which obviously this prey is bigger than his mouth. He's still stuck on that butt right there. But yeah, so they have those jaws that are unfused, so they can, they're double jointed in the back, so they can open up really, really wide. And then <clears throat> in the front, um, it's kind of considered like walking the prey down their mouth. So they'll take one side of the jaw and push it forward and then pull it back and then the other side and push it forward and pull it back. So that's how he's chewing on his prey, getting it to go further, further back. So once it's in his mouth and he's done walking it back, he's going to use his body 
and he's going to wiggle and you can't see all the hand motions I'm doing back here <laughs> but he's gonna wiggle and he's going to use his muscles to get it down so he might take a little bit with that <laughs> tail being on the wrong end so, there. Yeah, snakes have what we call streptostylic skulls which yeah, basically is a word. really really fancy word of saying yep. movable skull joints mm -hmm. or, or skull parts and yeah you can see that he's able to move the top part of his skull at pretty pretty uh um what's the word <laughs> I have no dramatically idea. oh my um, god you know, as he... he sort of like alicia says walks back mm -hmm. that, that he really is going to try to swallow it but first yeah, he's, he's going to try to first on that so let's assume that this mouse is alive right now he would be suffocating it in this position so Typically, I don't try to feed snakes when there are a bunch of people out here because a lot of the snakes get distracted, I guess. It's not so much they get scared, but they see things, they feel vibrations, they get distracted. They might think that they have to spit out their food and run the other direction. Or a lot of snakes like to drop their food thinking that I will give them more food. So, well, that's, that's talent, sir. He is crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gulp? Yeah. So Let's now you can see he's it. kind of moving his body to help move that mouse down. We just gotta do it the hard way, I guess. Well, of course. I have a lot of snakes that if they take the food from me the wrong way, not head first, they will drop it and look at me and say, give it back to me, I want it head first. I'm sorry, did I move? Did you see my shadow? So sorry. So I fed him with tongs. Um, a lot of my snakes do just get hand fed. I'm not afraid to be bit by them. Some of them, if they do bite your finger instead of the mouse, they will look at you like they've been betrayed <laughs> and they will make you wait like 15 minutes and then they will say, feed me again because you try to give me a finger instead of a mouse and that's not okay. So he's eating a little mouse right now. Yes. And you can see his body expanding now. And luckily he has that beautiful yellow line on his back that you can see. Very if you're well, just tuning wiggling. in, the mouse, the mouse was frozen yes. and thawed out, so it wasn't live when we fed it to him. I think the reason why he ate it backwards, he just wanted to demonstrate how crazy he is. Yes, he just wanted to show off and say, look at me, I am cool. <laughs> Which he very much is. A lot, I have employees and most of them will not feed this guy because half the time you do have to catch him midair as he jumps out of his cage. But if he does get out of his cage, he just sits there on the ground and looks at you. He knows where the food comes from. Hello. And he's not going anywhere. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so you can see that big bulge in his body now. And he's gonna make its way down. I don't have any more for you. I'm sorry. There we go. So yeah, now he'll digest that and tomorrow I'll have a nice, tomorrow or the next day I'll have a very smelly poopy snake cage because... What? I don't know what you want from me. I already fed you. Give me more. <laughs> yeah, most of the snakes get fed and they're like, okay, I need more. Just let it digest a little bit, buddy. Well, he hasn't had a lot of attention in the last two no, weeks. No, so he he's... hasn't. And you can see he's getting skinnier as the mouse moves down. Pretzel is scrolling my phone. She does that a lot. <laughs> she likes to hang out and she she's taking pictures of herself on my phone. With their bodies being so long, how big is their stomach? Since you can see the mouse go down, how far does it go down? Oh, maybe I have can show this in a picture. So I don't know if and this is a related question. Do snakes have a very linear GI tract, unlike mammals? Okay, yes. So, I don't know if you can see this picture very well, but as a snake swallows this, it is going to go down their esophagus, obviously. So about the first third of their body is going to be esophagus. And then about halfway down to a little bit further than that, they actually have their stomach. So this right here is going to be their stomach. It is a very large stomach compared to what we have, obviously. And then it's going to go into intestines. They still do have those. So this is its small intestine, which is very long. And then, so lots of people think that, you know, snakes have very long tails. They don't. So if I were to point out on him about right there, giving about two inches, 
that's where his tail actually is. So where the cloaca is down is his tail. So this whole thing is his body. So right now the mouse is probably actually getting to his stomach. Oh, wow, we've got John Joe oh, watching hello. from Ireland. Hi, John Joe. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> So yeah, the mouse is probably down. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't even know what you're upset about. It's probably in his stomach now. So yes, it is a very long linear thing. Pretty much all of their organs are compared to ours, which are just squished up. So they're pretty cool like that. That's how they can handle eating food whole and not chewing it up. So do we have any more questions? So would it be correct to call snakes derived legless lizards? Kind of. Yeah. So I think. Relationships are tough. Yes. And um, eventually, I'm not sure exactly what day. I was planning on doing it tomorrow, but things might be jiggled around a little bit because I, or something's, things have, things have changed on our schedule because of situations out of our control. But eventually, we're going to do a monitors and mosasaurs segment. And. Um, I'll, I'll get into a little bit about discussing relationships um, of monitor lizards to, to mosasaurs, but the other side of that question is, what is the relationship of snakes to mosasaurs? And, you know, there's a bit of discussion about w at what point did they branch off from one another? Um, some people think snakes branched off before um, you know, mosasaurs did, and you know, so there's a lot of a lot of discussion out there. And, and uh, the truth is, we've got some good ideas. There's a lot of well, there's some evidence to support these ideas, but we don't really have a good answer for that. And that's part of the fun, is as time goes by, we start to find more evidence to support different ideas. So yeah. Um, it generally, Curtis, uh, if you're watching, um, check out the, the question, uh, would it be correct to call snakes derived legless lizards? How do you feel about that? I, I say kind of. <laughs> so there are legless lizards. So there are glass lizards out there. We actually have one. He's not showing his head, but he does not have legs. Um, for whatever reason, they decided life would be better without their legs. And lizards, yeah, lizards don't quite have the movable skull. Yes, they don't. Uh, they have eyelids. They can't really coil they up They have as well. ears, so they do hear sounds. Mm -hmm. So there are substantial differences between snakes and lizards. Uh, but I will say snakes are possibly one of the most derived animals I could think of. They're, they're really very specialized at what they do. And... It's just amazing to watch them do what they do. So typically snakes do not have the pectoral or pelvic girdle that legs would be attached to, but it's either some pythons or some boas that do have little remnants of legs. So if you've ever seen one of those, I'm not really sure on what exact species it is that has like little tiny legs in the back and you can barely see them. But so obviously that leads into question of where is everything coming from oh, and it does seem like we found some fossil evidence that appear to be snakes with um very reduced sort of uh what would we call that um vestigial vestigial thank you um vestigial limbs mm -hmm. or legs that you know they're so they're so small that they don't really serve a purpose mm -hmm. they're just sort of remnants of the structure so, um, you know, that there, there is suggestion. Losing connection. Uh -oh. oh, there, we're back. Okay. okay, so repeat the question about probably the eggs. So do you ever feed the snakes eggs? They eat eggs in the wild, don't they? So some snakes do eat, eat eggs. Eat, 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 eat eggs. They, eat they, eggs. They, they, they. <laughs> they do uh. eat <laughs> eggs in the wild. Um, best one I can think of is black rat snakes or western rat snakes same thing sorry you just get confused on what they're actually called when they have a bunch of names they're also called chicken rat snakes because they eat chicken eggs so you can find them in chicken coops they will eat the chicken eggs lots of people think why aren't they eating the chickens well the eggs are a lot easier to get um, i have never personally fed any of my snakes eggs i have fed one of my lizards eggs and we are hoping to get a lizard that will eat eggs we we're hoping to get a Gila monster, but All right, so back to Gino's question about um, the derived 
derived legless lizard um, idea. Uh, I've got a, a more um, to the point answer. Thank you, Curtis. Um, they are from separate lineages and share a common ancestor. Um, they're what we call a sister taxa, which means they are very closely related. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to you and kind of helps answer that question a little more accurately and scientifically. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? Um, what is the longest snake at the museum right now? I bet that would probably be one of Curtis's snakes. My longest snake is a bull snake named Jacob, and he is just about six feet long. Um, he's also really, really big because um, he's really round, like that round. He did not come out today because he just ate yesterday, so he's a little bit too cranky to come out and play with us. But I'm sure Curtis's diamondbacks probably are a lot bigger than that. So. Yeah, I, I'm thinking six or seven feet at least. Yeah, and probably a lot wider. Yeah, there's some there's some big snakes down there in the waters. <laughs> um, all right, so do we have any more questions? Uh, if not, we are going to sign off for um, the morning. Um, as always, uh, we'll say, sh please, please, please share our, our live feeds when they are no longer live or even when they are live. Um, they will always be available on our webpage. We're working on converting them into different formats to either post them on our YouTube page as well as our webpage. Um, share, like, comment. Um, we appreciate all the people that do tune in during our live feeds. Uh, this wouldn't be very much fun. It wouldn't work very well if people weren't asking questions. So um, we'll be back again this afternoon. Um, our, like I said, our schedule got a little jogged a bit, so I'm not sure what we're going to do this afternoon. So I'll have to figure that out in the next couple of hours. Um, but uh, we will be back with hopefully something interesting, something exciting. Um, Sorry, whippersnappers over there. Whippersnappers crazy. like waving. Um, <laughs> I thought I saw something moving. I'm like, what is that? Um, so uh, we're going to say. What is oh, afternoon? What is the topic this afternoon? Krista, I am making this up as I go. He's unorganized. Um, initially, initially, we were going to do up close with Rattlers, but uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, that's been pushed back till tomorrow. So I am thinking I might. Uh, discuss maybe the fish within a fish today uh, and sort of talk about one of our really famous fossils. So that's a distinct possibility if that's something that interests you. Um, so um, we will see you this afternoon um, and we'll have something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easily distracted by snakes. I know, I was like, wow, she's... I used to try to do homework Oh. when I was supposed to be working and she would always knock my pencil out of Curtis, me. thanks for tuning in regardless. Uh, I'm glad you're here to support my ignorance. <laughs> when I fall short and I can't remember words, it's always nice to have some backup, so I do appreciate mm -hmm. it. Oh, the fish um, within the fish will start at 2 o'clock. Yes. Central time. Yeah, 2 o'clock central time, so you'll have to add or subtract whichever <laughs> part time. of the world you're in uh, and figure that, that out because I'm not on top of things right now enough to do that. Coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Um, so as I was saying, I want to say thank you to both, uh, Curtis, Curtis, oh gosh, <laughs> Curtis Schmidt, our zoological collections manager and Dr. Elmer Fink, who've been very, very supportive, um, in, uh, participating in this. And, uh, my background is in vertebrate paleontology. So I know a lot about very dead things. But when it comes to extant uh, biological organisms, I sometimes get awkward when I'm trying to describe them because I look at things from a very different lens. So having guys like Dr. Fink and Curtis out there helping me field these questions is really, really helpful. So I do want to give them a shout out. And of course, um, you know, Dr. Reese Barrick, who's kind of lurking around in the background here, is always good to fall back on when I get in over my head. Alicia, uh, thank you so much for coming in. I know you've got a new baby girl that you'd rather be hanging out with rather than me and and uh, the weirdos at the museum. So um, I'm just rambling on now. This afternoon, I'm going to teach them how to do some of those talking things, like. Tip -a -tip. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'm a lot she of fun just, at parties. She is doing lots she of stuff is, on your phone. Like, she has, wow. She's making friends. Homemade palette bar. Wow. Thank you. I, you know, okay, so one of the things I'm doing at home, this is my plan for when I finally get told to stay home. I'm building a tiki room, and I've been trying to figure out how to build a bar, and <laughs> Pretzel just <laughs> found a bar for me. That is so weird. <laughs> so anyways, um, <laughs> We're going to sign off now because it's just getting silly. Uh, so I'm Ian Trevethan. I am the Outreach Coordinator here at the Sternberg. This is Alicia. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you later this afternoon.